Duras. Welcome back everyone to your C programming series. This video we are going to be talking about your first control flow statement. So control flow statements are loops and conditionals, anything that can branch our program. And these are like the foundation for more complex applications. So literally, you're going to see these in every application you work in or work on. If, if you don't know what these are, you better get used to them. <laughs> so the first one we got is the if statement. So the if is really simple, but if you're new to programming, it can take some time to really wrap your brain around how it works. So the way it works is you just type out if, and then now I'm gonna get some specifics on what these characters are called because I, I see a lot of people say these things wrong and it's not like a big deal, but just, just for your sake. So then you put a left parentheses and you leave some space because we're gonna put some stuff in there and we close it with a right parentheses. Then what you do is you use a left curly brace and then a right curly brace. And then inside of here, you can put your code. By the way, these are called forward slashes. Not backslashes, they're forward slashes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a big one. Okay, they're forward. So you got that down, cool. So now that we know what these characters are called, we just gotta describe what's going on here. Inside of these curly braces, we are going to put an expression. And if you remember from the previous video, what's going to happen is that this expression gets evaluated and it's going to evaluate to true or false. So this is a Boolean expression. If the expression evaluates to true, we are going to execute everything within these curly braces. If it's evaluated to false, we are going to skip these curly braces and continue the evaluation of the code beyond these curly braces. So just so you know, this is often called a conditional. And the reason it's called a conditional is because this code here only executes if a certain condition is met. And that condition is this expression being true. And we will be going into some examples in C programming in, in just a little bit, but for now we're just trying to get the concept down so you really understand what's going on here. So this is a conditional, once again, conditional because this is only going to execute on some conditions, which is when the expression is evaluated to true. Some people call this section of code a code block. And the reason it's called a code block is because it's within these curly braces. So this here, <laughs> it's like I'm using a curly brace to put the curly braces in it. <laughs> so this here is often the, uh, the, the start of a code block. And it, it, the, the thing that makes it special is, is really that things inside of this code block are a little bit different than things outside of the code block. And it really has to do with something called scoping. And this will make a lot more sense when you get more into variables and uh, their lifetime and all of that. But essentially, if you put something in this code block, like defining a variable, like let's say we do int x equals five, well, this is inside of the code block. This is inherently different than if we did int x up here these variables would have different scope depending on where you define them. But don't worry too much about scoping, we'll get into that later. Just know that that is the reason why an if statement has those curly braces. It's because we are creating a new code block to execute some section of code. To make this easy, we are going to first look at the easy cases. So for example, if we had an if statement and inside of the parentheses, we just put a Boolean variable such as Caleb is fat. All right, so whether that's true or false is a little subjective, <laughs> but this can kind of illustrate how an if statement works. And because this is a Boolean variable, we don't have to do any kind of comparison. We don't have to say Caleb is fat is true or Caleb is fat is false. All I have to do is put that variable there. 
And essentially, this is going to either look like this. If true or if false. Because it's going to get evaluated. This is essentially going to be replaced once the code is executing with the value true or the value false. And the code, the curly braces are only going to get executed on the true case. So the key takeaway from this, and this will come in handy, is that if you have a Boolean variable, you do not have to do anything except put the name of the variable in those parentheses. That is enough to have it evaluate to true or false. And that's the magic of an expression. It's kind of like uh, you can you can fill it in with values and it just kind of magically evaluates to something. Sort of how five plus five will ultimately evaluate to an integer. And then anywhere an integer is expected, this five plus five will work. <laughs> so the same thing here. Because the if statement expects a Boolean, we can pass in a Boolean variable and it works. So that's really cool. So what we can do next is if we wanna make our application a little bit more complex, we can make an if statement, use our curly braces, and then put some code in here such as exercise. And this function here, this could just be a custom function that we create. And it doesn't really matter what it does, but this kind of illustrates the purpose of an if statement. Because if the person is not fat, <laughs> you might not want to exercise. I mean, in real life, yeah, exercise is great. <laughs> but maybe this is an extreme form of exercise to really lose weight or something. <laughs> so we only want the person to exercise if they're overweight. That's how an if statement works. If the person is not overweight, then this never gets executed. You can basically just pretend it's not even there and it will continue going down here. So that's that, that's an if statement, the very first control flow statement. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about something else. Specifically, we are going to be doing some of this stuff in code, in C, so now we can actually apply what we've learned. So check it out, guys. It's gonna be really cool and hopefully really helpful. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.